Welcome back to Headliners. It's me, Simon Evans, the wonderful Eric McElroy, and the comedically insightful Scott Capuro. Let's get on with it. Women in Saudi Arabia have only recently been allowed to drive cars. Now, three years on, they're being hired to drive trains. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> Eric. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Saudi Arabia is sort of opening up its, uh, mm -hmm. its rules against the restrictions that they have on women. Yeah. Um, I guess the same thing that we were talking about happening in Kuwait earlier yeah. in the show. Um, tw they had uh, 28,000 women apply for 30 positions driving these trains. Wow. It's just incredible. Um, is because there, is there, has there been a, an animated um, TV show for, for children, which they've grown up with? Which has maybe. Given them an, you know? I think some of the women might think it's safer to drive a train in Saudi Arabia than be a journalist. Okay. So they're figuring yep. it's a safer that makes place sense. to be. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it feels, I mean, it's great, but it mm. feels like because Saudi Arabia is so restricted on what it allows women to do, that it's kind of a token. They're, they're trying to improve the image of what Saudi Arabia Can does. Can I ask it like, a, a, this that might, might sound extraordinarily um, un uneducated, do, uh, uh, what level of uh, freedom do they have in headdress at the moment in Saudi Arabia, women? Um, I think it's still quite restricted. I mean, yeah. I, I was only in Saudi Arabia once and it was, it was tense. I mean, it was not a place where you felt relaxed or comfortable. Right. And that was going into other Arab countries like Bahrain, where people were much friendlier and yeah, warm, yeah. but the whole atmosphere there felt oppressive. And at the conference I was at, when the, the head of the conference came in, all of the women that were Saudi had to leave and wait in the back room wow. while the crown prince walked through the conference. Now, this was 20 years ago. Yeah. Maybe it would be better now, but it's still a very oppressive culture. That's, a, that's an extraordinarily uh, important statistic, though. 31,000 women applying for 30 jobs. Sorry, 28,000. 28,000 28, women applying. I mean, that does feel like the kind of pressure, once that sort of pressure starts to build, but the, you can't resist yeah. that for very long, can you? I don't think. If women, if women are that keen to take on even well, like fairly... Because historically, yeah. they've allowed women to work in education and health care. Yeah. Mm. So right. they've really restricted the jobs. And again, Saudi has the same problem that the other Gulf states do, that they have yeah. a lot of expat workers, and yeah. they don't have native people doing regular jobs. No. But the Saudi population is much bigger. There are a lot more Saudis. And so finding something for them to do is important. Got anything on this, Scott? What do you think? No, I'm, when I've performed in the Middle East, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Doha, you know, you do have that feeling that you're interfering mm. if you're foreign. And mm. you do have the feeling that you are less than. Yeah. And that's across the board, male or female people who are there. And I always am amazed that women are there working on their own, but they're there to, to make a lot of money and come home and buy a house. Yeah. But it just seems, that they do tell me when I'm there that the times that they're working, it's very difficult. Mm. That they're basically treated like scum. Mm. 